Yeah. yeah. This has to like, be like 70 hours to work. Has to be what? I'm going to the hospital. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is really silly. Unbeknownst to me at the time, my wallet was stolen at the gym. I uh, froze all my cards, had to get a new access card for this Oakwood place, but everything else is all figured out, so that's good. And I'm realizing now that there's a little symbolism because I bought some lemons, so I'm gonna go make some lemonade. So the kids are here at this camp. I feel like I don't really know them, but they're there. Uh, I have to learn like 47 names I find myself constantly asking them, so what's your favorite movie? And I got a lot of uh, Inceptions, Moonrise Kingdoms. Hey, what's up? Sometimes I have to force myself to drive without any music or podcast playing. So I've been reading this a uh, book, The Pale King, by David Foster Wallace. And I got to this part that I feel like is kind of uh, fitting for the vlog. Uh, it's a different context, but I think it can fit pretty easily into something like watching a YouTube video, especially. So I'm just gonna read it. Uh, This is because sitting still and concentrating on just one task for an extended length of time is, as a practical matter, impossible. If you said, I spent the whole night in the library working on some client's sociology paper, you really meant that you'd spent between two and three hours working on it, and the rest of the time fidgeting and sharpening and organizing pencils and doing skin checks in the men's room mirror, and wandering around the stacks opening volumes at random and reading about, say, Durkheim's theories of suicide. There was none of this diffraction in that split-second view of the room, though. I highly recommend the movie Hereditary to anyone who hasn't seen it. I think it's pretty much a masterful film in terms of craft and in terms of uh, tone. Because, I, well, actually, uh, that's definitely a polarizing factor of it because it's constantly uh, shifting tones. And I think a lot of people react negatively to a film that does that. I don't see that as a detriment to a film. I think uh, expectations are the only thing that gets in the way of somebody accepting a film that changes tones. And don't let your expectations get in the way. That's such a problem in uh, filmmaking, or in, in movie viewing, I think, is people, they're like, oh, I'm going to see a comedy, and when they find out that it's not a comedy, they don't like the film. Which is crazy, because that's just you creating a context around it and not seeing the film for what it actually is. It's very unfair. Because tone is always changing. I mean, that's a realistic thing, don't you think? Like, you walk into a room and there's a different tone. You walk outside and there's an entirely different tone. Why do you need a tone in a film to remain consistent for two hours? 
One sensed that these were people who did not fidget, who did not read a page of, say, dull taxpayer explanation about the deduction of some item and then realized that they'd actually been thinking about the apple in their lunch bag and whether or not to maybe eat the apple right here and now until they realized that their eyes had passed over all the words on the page without actually having read them at all. Seeing this was kind of traumatic. I'd always felt frustrated and embarrassed by how much reading and writing time I actually wasted, about how much I sort of blinked in and out while trying to absorb or convey large amounts of information. To put it bluntly, I had felt ashamed about how easily I got bored when trying to concentrate. It took me all the way up to the age of finally getting away from Philo and entering a highly selective college to understand that the problem with stillness and concentration was more or less universal and not some unique shortcoming that was going to prevent me from ever really rising above my Preterite background and achieving something. Which is easier, but this one's different preparation. So, that's easy. Oh, this? Yes. L. L, and then from here, from the L, you're gonna prep off of this arm here, and you bring it up here. That's I it. got it. You got it. <laughs> Next, even harder ones, which is, of course, much more advanced. So, like, turns in the air, air risk, like, stuff like that. Or, like, this one's up. This one's a lot harder. <laughs> I remember one film in particular that I watched when I was a kid and hated it and I would always say there was no there's no character development and that was my reasoning and oh I think it was like Transformers or something it was like back when I when I didn't know what a good film was so I just follow Rotten Tomatoes and things like that and I would just always say that was the worst film there's no character development and now I think that there's no reason for character development if the film doesn't call for it like, why does there, has, does, does there have to be a transformation? Not saying that Transformers is the... Actually, Transformation's kind of in the title of that film, isn't it? Hmm. Seeing the enormous lengths that those elite, well-educated undergrads from all over the nation went to to avoid delay or mitigate concentrated work was an eye-opening experience for me. In fact, the school's social structure was set up to prize and esteem students who could pass their classes and assemble a good transcript without ever working hard. People who skated by doing the absolute minimum required for institutional slash parental approval were regarded as cool, while people who actually applied themselves to their assignments and to the work of their own education and achievement were relegated to the status of grinds or tools, the lowest caste in the college's merciless social hierarchy. In Philo, educating yourself was something you had to do in spite of school, not because of it which is basically why so many of my high school peers are still there in Philo, even now. Selling one another insurance, drinking supermarket liquor, watching television, awaiting the formality of their first cardiac. Uh, yeah, so I don't want the vlog to be a distraction. But not right now. Evan, pictured here as a 27-year-old LA resident, had a dream recently in which he woke up pleasantly surprised to find that he was Instagram famous, over a million followers and counting. The dream revealed itself as a stress dream when he could not remember his password, running through every variation imaginable and coming up dry. Finally, he woke up back to his comfortable obscurity and his password still preloaded into the application. We're going to see Hereditary. 